phase two. This is flight. Go for it. So uh, can you give the team a briefing on what happens at EDL Main with the configuration of the system? Yeah, so activity gave you uh, a great rundown of all of the things that happen at this uh, critical transition. Uh, but just to give everyone a little more of an idea of what this means for the spacecraft, we have just undergone a transition from EDL approach mode, which we uh, entered about six days ago, to the EDL main spacecraft mode. And this is really a fundamental shift in how we've operated the vehicle since it departed Earth. Uh, previously, the spacecraft was programmed to maintain thermal control, communication with the ground, and stable power margins, even if that meant interrupting uh, programmed activities and dropping into a safe state. With the transition to EDL main, uh, the spacecraft's number one priority is setting itself up for success on the journey down to the Martian surface. So as part of this mode change, uh, like activity mentioned, we have uh, gone ahead and disabled all system fault protection responses because we no longer need the spacecraft to stop and wait for intervention from the ground to recover. In fact, we need the exact opposite. If at all possible, uh, we need the spacecraft to continue moving through the events of EDL, um, depending on what is largely a single string system with selective redundancy to do the best job it can. Uh, so this is a good time to remind the team that success in ED, in, of EDL is not guaranteed, um, but uh, we can be assured that you know a large part of our design was flight proven by MSL. So also, as uh, activity mentioned, we uh, marked a set of EDL critical devices healthy, uh, regardless of their previous state, uh, and we told the spacecraft to stop any uh, in-progress CBM windows and any in-progress uh, SFP responses, although uh, we had neither of those active at the time. Uh, although many parts of the spacecraft are essential for EDL, um, the things that we marked healthy include uh, the TDS, our landing radar, uh, both uh, DIMUs and the uh, vision compute element and the DMCA. Uh, we've also gone ahead and um, set the vehicle config in case uh, we get a reset at the end of EDL to make sure that when the vehicle wakes up, it uh, assumes that, is, that it is in the uh, uh, surface configuration. I'll pause here uh, as we watch the rest of the events of EDL start. EDL start anchor has continued. We've seen the EDL 2000 sequence complete. Uh, powering off the LKM heater. Uh, we are proceeding to reinforce device oh, well, one Entry guidance um, back on net. How do you read me? Bye bye. Reacquire our knowledge to pseudo celestial IMU. Well, well, two, tap two is back on net. Copy, tap two. Oh, well, guidance two, take two. Copy activity. Copy guidance. OL2, OL1, can you take the con for two minutes? Copy that. Thank you. The warnings we saw um, so far are all expected. Copy activity. Okay, phase two, you want to continue the uh, description you were giving? Yeah, sure, flight. Uh, so uh, right now we are uh, doing two things. We're taking this opportunity to reinforce uh, the state of the spacecraft. Um, a lot of the actions that we're doing right now, uh, the devices are already in this state. Um, this is something that we do uh, just to make sure that the spacecraft is uh, in the state we want it, 
um, after any type of uh, fall protection responses may have been executing. Um, of course, we didn't have that situation today, but that's why some of these actions are here. Uh, since we've started um, the EDL Start Anchor, uh, we have gone ahead and uh, turned on the backup repo. Uh, we've also turned off the uh, LCAM heater, uh, which was preheating the LCAM uh, to the appropriate uh, temperature for the beginning of EDL, so we can uh, so it can coast down thermally and be at the right temperature when we use it uh, later on, just before backshell step. Uh, we also have our uh, RCS cat beds um, uh, still on and, uh, and heating up those uh, thruster cat beds as we prepare to fire them for the first time uh, during guided entry. Uh, we should have no change in our avionics state except for the RU reinet uh, that we saw at the beginning um, and our flight software execution state uh, should remain the same. Uh, but the backup computer running Second Chance uh, will have armed itself uh, and uh, prepared to, it is prepared to take over as we go through EDL if we should experience any type of reset from the prime oh, computer. Oh, I'm back on that. Copy that. Oh, two going off net for two. Copy. Mm -hmm. As we speak, we are um, transitioning CBM states, um, and I think uh, activity is going to give us a little more uh, information on that in their update. Yeah, copy phase. Uh, the CBM change, uh, as I mentioned previously, is to the EDL reserve two-way non-coherent right row. activity. Copy flight. EDL phase, go ahead. Okay, pep talk, I guess, to the team. All right. Uh, you know I'm terrible at pep talks. I think you, my reputation precedes me there, and. Uh, Look, I know this hasn't been easy, right? I'm not even sure we've even been in, all in the same room at the same time. I mean, I'm staring at folks across the uh, across the internet as well. Uh, even now, right? Only yeah. Point check. Okay. Um, I do want to just extend uh, my heartfelt appreciation from the EDL team to the uh, to the launch crews team. Uh, you've done everything we've asked for, right? I mean, you've battled anomalies. You've you know dealt with Cephes. You've done everything. Uh, he delivered a healthy spacecraft uh, to the place that we want to go. Um, and she's right on target, right? He, he did the last maneuver literally two months ago. Right? This is pretty incredible, in my opinion. Um, and she's armed with the right information to help us land. You know, doing the parameter update last night, we're, we're ready to roll. You've done everything right. So, um, and you've put up with us, too, right? You've put up with our eccentricities and uh, the things we like to do in EDL land. So I very much appreciate that. Uh, so uh, you all should sleep in on Friday since, uh, I, you know, you guys have earned it. Um, thanks for literally and figuratively putting us in the right position to succeed. And uh, let's land on Mars together. Copy EDL phase. And uh, as flight director, I also would like to thank the whole team, cruise ops, EDL ops, EDL team, and the surface ops as well. It's been an amazing journey. I think we all know that. And it's been my honor and pleasure to work with you all side by side. And your tireless efforts and endurance in the face of our challenges has been truly, truly inspiring. So kudos to you. Mission, would you like to say something? Yeah, just echoing the same words that, uh, that Al and Magdi have, uh, have mentioned. You guys have overcome great obstacles in the last six and a half months, and it started with an earthquake in this room on launch day at L minus 20 minutes. So I can't be more proud than all of the achievements that you guys have, have uh, pulled off in the last six and a half months. Whatever happens in the next uh, hour and a half, you can be proud of the achievements that you've uh, accomplished so far. I look forward to seeing you on the other side, and I only wish that the rest of our team could be sharing this moment with us. Uh, this is a very unusual event. This room is only as half as full as it would be if we weren't in this pandemic. So missing everybody on the team who's not with us here today. And uh, go EDL. Welcome to the EDL family. <laughs>
go ahead and continue the report. Sure thing, Flight. Um, we've since completed the EDL start anchor. Um, as I was mentioning, we changed our CBM row to EDL reserve two-way non-coherent. That row reinforces our CBM windows disabled, keeps our packetization on, it turns off our ranging and switches to the auxiliary oscillator. We have also started our real-time data products and reinforced Medley on. At this time, we our next anchor will be at 12.30 local time. Copy activity. OL1, this is TAD1. Go TAD1. I have an OD136 comparison with EP3. The position delta is now 147.3 meters very slightly from the 147.7 meters we had previously. Copy. This may be our last look before we stop sealing the screen. Do you want to go ahead and show it with the viewplane if you have it? Thanks. Okay. All stations, as with our tradition, we usually would have some peanuts at this moment. We all had our peanuts at lunch, but to keep our tradition, I will take one peanut for all of us to keep our tradition. <laughs> Oh, well, this is TAD 3. Go. Missed distance for OD 133 is 810 meters. Copy. Do you have a, a pair of runouts on a plot you'd like to share? Uh, yes, I do. Please do. Thank you, TAD 3. Flight Telecom. Go ahead, Telecom. Telecom, I just want to let you know that Radio Science reports that despite the inclement weather in, Virgi in West Virginia, the Green Bank Telescope was able to point at Mars. Uh, there was a threat that we they were not going to be able to do it because of the rain and snow but and the ice, but they are doing it. Copy, tel Telecom. Great news. System flight. Go flight. Were you able to find the visualization so we can display it? Affirmative. I will try again. My computer was having trouble with the visualization and WebEx, but I will uh, restart WebEx and try again. Copy.
all stations on M20 EDL ops. Um, probably the last time if you feel the need to do a battery change to do that um, before we go into quiet mode. Um, also, uh, unless we have something updated we want to show in the next couple of minutes, we're about to turn over our WebEx screen to telecom for tones. At that point, I'm happy to get updates um, in chat in our WebEx on EDL ops, but I'd prefer to not have any more call-outs over the net unless you see something you do not expect. Oh, well, this is TAP3. I have the uh, runout solution for OD135, distance to target, 392 meters. Copy. Feel free to share if you'd like. Call to OL1 voice check. Heard you five by OL1. Happy. Looks good. Thank you. Tap three. All stations at this on M20 EDL ops. At this time, uh, we will go quiet on the net until we start our uh, callouts during EDL telemetry. Here we go. Phase two, flight. Go flight. At this time, uh, let's continue our briefing for the rest of EDL. Sure. So uh, after coming out of EDL start, that's our uh, last uh, real reinforcement of the state that the vehicle was in uh, throughout much of cruise and EDL approach. Um, and it's uh, our precursor to making many more radical changes to the state of the vehicle. Uh, Matt Wallace said it well the other day. This is, EDL is kind of like a controlled disassembly of the vehicle. As we go through, we need to uh, uh, get rid of the things we don't need anymore and uh, get ready to put our wheels on the ground. So um, one of the final things that we're doing here uh, is ensuring that our ACS knowledge is uh, top-notch. Um, we depend on ACS to pass an estimate of the uh, vehicle's attitude and uh, rate of change to EDL, and that's our starting point for propagating down to the ground. Um, when we come up in uh, EDL, the EDL prep anchor uh, is when we'll take our the last state uh, from ACS and we'll be propagating 
uh, from that point to the ground um, uh, until we get uh, more knowledge from the radar once we turn it on. Um, I can give a high-level overview of some of the events that were that are going to transpire uh, throughout EDL. Um, of course, commentary will be uh, detailing this um, as we go through, uh, and you'll hear a lot of members of the EDL team uh, calling out uh, specific events as they occur um, and indicators as we see them. But uh, to give everyone an idea of what we're going to see, um, we will first start uh, shortly here. We'll get news that uh, the vehicle has separated the cruise stage uh, since we no longer need that. Uh, we need to prepare for entry into the atmosphere. Uh, after that, we will uh, indeed start the entry process. Um, at this point, uh, we're depending on the heat shield to uh, both protect the spacecraft uh, and uh, help slow us down. Uh, we'll be uh, gathering data from our medley sensors, um, and uh, we'll be decelerating rapidly at that point. Uh, as we make our way through the atmosphere, uh, we'll be firing our uh, DRCS thrusters uh, that are in that poke out the back of the back shell, um, and uh, this will allow us to steer our trajectory uh, as we make our way through the atmosphere. Um, and uh, this is one of the things that allowed uh, MSL, the Curiosity rover, um, to, uh, um, to land where it did. Um, and we're depending on the same type of entry guidance uh, this time around uh, to help get us very close to our target. Uh, as we make our way uh, through entry, finish, the, uh, finish our, our guided entry um, profile, uh, we'll do a maneuver called uh, heading alignment, where we uh, point toward the target uh, and get ready to uh, deploy the parachute. Uh, but th before we deploy the parachute, uh, we need to get rid of a uh, set of balance masses uh, that have been uh, giving us a uh, center of gravity or CG offset um, throughout uh, the guided entry phase. Uh, so these are called the uh, the entry balance masses. We also call this maneuver um, suffer, S-U-F-R, or straighten up and fly right. Uh, so we'll go ahead and eject those masses uh, when we get uh, a trigger from the GNC system uh, telling us that we're at the appropriate range to the target to do so. As soon as we deploy those, uh, we will uh, no longer have a CG offset. Um, and uh, we'll be ready to deploy the uh, parachute 17 seconds later. I'm going to hold here for uh, EO prep as uh, we're about to start that anchor. Copy, phase two. And activity, please call that out when it's ready. Copy, Philippe. All stations at this point, let's limit our traffic on the net to critical issues only. Flight EDL Com. Go EDL Com. As per step 205 in the OCP, uh, we can confirm that MRO has started their first flu. Copy EDL Com.
DDL Prep Anchor has begun. We have stopped our AMAN, started the raw DP for EDL, idled the NAV filter um, and IVP, and we are now propagating via the DIMU. We've powered on our UHF, but it's not yet transmitting, and the anchor has complete. We expect our next anchor to start in two minutes. Copy activity. Phase two, taking a battery change. Phase two, back on that. The HRS vent anchor has begun. Here we are reinforcing the BCB discharge and charge states. We are powering on the pyro firing cards. Flight, we are about 14 minutes from entry interface. The vehicle is currently preparing the heat rejection system that has kept the thermal system cool inside the air shell for about the last six months. This will allow the spacecraft to more easily cut the line in upcoming cruise stage separation, which is under four minutes now. We have now enabled the rover Pyro bus. We are powering off the cruise stage devices. The vehicle is preparing for the upcoming cruise stage operation in about 3 minutes 15 seconds by powering off all the devices on the cruise stage in order that they can be safe once the cruise stage is jettisoned. We are firing our first pyros to vent the HRS liquid and gas. The HRS vent anchor is complete. We will see the next anchor in approximately three minutes. We are currently 12 and a half minutes from entry interface. We are coming upon cruise stage separation in two minutes and 20 seconds.
We're about a minute and a half from crew stage separation, about 11 minutes, 20 seconds from entry interface. We are switching to the MFSK tones. Telemetry will have stopped. Telecom is confirming that the spacecraft has switched to broadcasting tones. These tones are received directly from Perseverance, but have very limited information content. We won't receive real-time information until about um, t nine, ten minutes from now, once the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter starts relaying information from Perseverance. We are under a minute from crew stage separation, about ten and a half minutes from entry interface. We are seeing the heartbeat tones. We are continuing to receive tones from Perseverance, coming standing by for crew stage separation. RCS priming. Crew stage sup. We have indication that crew stage separation has been confirmed by the spacecraft. In about one minute, Perseverance's landing software will wake up and begin the final preparations for entry. The first action it will do is to fire warm-up pulses with its entry thrusters. These pulses ensure that the spacecraft gets the thrust that it wants during entry interface. We are about nine minutes from entry interface. I have confirmation that uh, we got shadowed by the uh, cruise stage uh, as it uh, passed through our beam to the Earth. Telecom indicated actually that we could see a signal that the cruise stage went between the Perseverance entry capsule and Earth. So we saw a little blip uh, in the data stream Our indicating cruise up. stage separation. We have confirmation that the vehicle has started warming up those entry thrusters. Warm-up pulses have begun. Spin down. At this point, the spacecraft is trying to stop its spin BBM. from the cruise two revolutions per minute down to zero, and then we'll turn to its desired orientation from entry. It will... PTE separate the two balance masks that has kept it balanced during all of cruise. This will allow the entry capsule to have lift when it enters the atmosphere. We have confirmation that the spacecraft has turned to the desired entry attitude. We are about seven and a half minutes from entry interface. Points carrier lock. Uh, sorry, MR, the DTE from uh, Radio Science from uh, Green Bank reports carrier lock. Do you see the carrier on the downlink? Flight level one. We are continuing to wait for entry interface. We're about six minutes and 45 seconds from entry interface. We have confirmation from uh, Greenback that they are receiving direct to Earth telemetry via that path. The spacecraft Perseverance is currently transmitting heartbeat tones. 
these tones indicate that Perseverance is operating normally and has nothing significant to report. This is as expected. We're currently just over six minutes from entry interface. We are just under uh, we're about five and a half minutes from entry interface. We're still receiving heartbeat tones. Uh, we expect to continue receiving heartbeat tones until about five minutes after entry. At that time, Perseverance will be no longer in view of our antennas here on Earth. About 90 seconds prior to entry, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter should begin receiving telemetry from Perseverance and streaming it to Earth in near real time. Uh, there are a few expected short outages, such as when we have a plasma backout or when we enter the peak heating phase. Aside from these outages caused by the plasma blackout, antenna switching, or high dynamic events, spacecraft events, we should have telemetry until about 90 seconds after landing. Uh, a plasma blackout is when the signal from Perseverance isn't strong enough to make it through the superheated, super fast air flowing around the spacecraft all the way down to Earth. Once the temperature drops below that peak heating, we do reacquire the signal from Perseverance. We are currently about four and a half minutes from entry interface. Perseverance continues to report heartbeat tones, indicating everything is nominal. MRO reports the electro radio is powered on, ready to receive signals from the lander. Mars Reconnaissance's orbiter has reported that it's ready to receive the signals from Perseverance. It should be in a few minutes here. We're just Flight local one. from entry interface. Around this time, a second spacecraft, MAVEN, should begin picking up telemetry from Perseverance and will continue to record that telemetry until several minutes post-landing. We won't get that data for several hours after landing as it's being recorded and then will be forwarded to Earth later. We are continuing to receive heartbeat tones, indicating that everything is nominal. We're currently at about three minutes until entry interface. We are two and a half minutes from entry interface. Perseverance is to transmit heartbeat tones, indicating everything is nominal. We're just under two minutes from entry interface. As it gets closer to Mars, Perseverance is actually being pulled in by gravity and accelerating. By the time Perseverance reaches entry interface point, she should be going just under 5.4 kilometers per second. We're at about 90 seconds from entry interface and standing by for Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to pick up the telemetry.
We are one minute from entry interface. MROs are in receive mode. We have confirmation that the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is now relaying data from Perseverance. We're about 30 seconds from entry interface. Perseverance is going about 5.2 kilometers per second and is about 190 kilometers altitude above the surface of Mars. Confirm your HF data flow. Seconds I'm from W on. 5.3 kilometers per second and an altitude of uh, about 150 kilometers from the surface of Mars. Entry. We have confirmation of entry interface. Perseverance is currently going 5.3 kilometers per second at an altitude of about 120 kilometers from the surface of Mars. The fit is now waiting until it begins feeling the atmosphere of Mars to slow it down. Once there is enough atmosphere, it will start controlling its path to the landing target. Doppler indicates entry into the atmosphere. Navigation is also confirming that we can see a little bit of that slowdown of the atmosphere on the Perseverance entry capsule. Our current velocity is about 5.36 kilometers per second and an altitude of about 67 kilometers from the surface. We are probably seeing MRO plasma blackout at this point. Bank one completed. Hammer has lost lock. Probably indicate reversal, bank reversal. We have indications that Perseverance is now performing bank reversals in the atmosphere. These are the steps in order to control its Max diesel, distance to G's. the landing target. Uh, Perseverance has just passed through the point of maximum deceleration and has indicated that it felt approximately 10 Earth Gs of deceleration. MRO has lock again. Doppler indicate reversal. Bank to complete. We saw a small outage uh, of the UHF telemetry from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter during that peak heating phase likely caused by the plasma blackout. Perseverance is still continuing to perform bank reversals in the atmosphere to control its distance to the landing target. Probably kick reversal. End of range control, range minus 1.9 kilometers, cross range minus 2.4 kilometers. Perseverance is going about one kilometer per second at an altitude of about 16 kilometers from the surface of Mars. We have entered heading alignment, which means Perseverance is no longer trying to control the distance to Mars, but in, to the target on Mars, but instead is flying straight to the target. Our current velocity is about 550 meters per second at an altitude of about 15 kilometers from the surface. MRO is reporting good telemetry lock. We are coming upon the start. 
We are starting to straighten up and fly right maneuver. UVMD jettison. Where the spacecraft will jettison the entry balance masses in preparation for parachute deploy and to roll over to give the radar a better look at the ground. Alpha K indicate shoot deploy. The navigation has confirmed that the parachute has deployed and we are seeing significant deceleration in the velocity. Our current velocity is 440 meters per second at an altitude of about 12 kilometers from the surface of Mars. Heat shield set. Perseverance has now slowed to subsonic speeds and the heat shield has been separated. This allows both the radar and the cameras to get their first look at the surface. Current velocity is 145 meters per second and an altitude of about 10 kilom nine and a half kilometers above the surface. Nav filter converge. Velocity solution 3.3 meters per second. Altitude 7.4 kilometers. Now has radar lock on the ground. Current velocity is about 100 meters per second. 6.6 .6 kilometers of the surface. Perseverance is continuing to descend on the parachute. We are coming up on the initialization of terrain relative navigation and subsequently the priming of the landing engines. Our current velocity is about 90 meters per second at an altitude of 4.2 kilometers. OVS valid. We have confirmation that the lander vision system has produced a valid solution and part of terrain relative navigation. Priming. TBA is nominal. We have priming of the landing engines. Back Our shell set. is 83 meters per second at about 2.6 kilometers from the surface of Mars. We have confirmation that the back shell has separated. We are currently performing the divert maneuver. Current velocity is about 75 meters per second at an altitude of about a kilometer off the surface of Mars. Here in safety, Bravo. We have completed our terrain relative navigation. Current speed is about 30 meters per second, altitude of about 300 meters off the surface of Mars. SDS level? Constant velocity 40. Constant velocity accordion, altitude error. We have started our constant velocity accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane, about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. We've lost direct to earth tones. Throttle down. Sky crane maneuver has started. About 20 meters. Tango left. Delta. Nominal. We're getting signals from MRO. Remy stable. UHF is good. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. At this point, the descent stage has flown away to a safe distance. Perseverance is continuing to transmit direct through Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to Earth. Reports they're still getting telemetry from the lander. All right. All right, all stations. Touchdown confirmed. We're going to wait for the images.
OL3, OL1, you have what you need? OL3, Flight. I have what I need. Flight, we have seen the completion of EDL 3000. Copy. Copy activity. That is as expected. Emerald is still seeing a strong signal from the lander. <sighs> Flight, this is OL3. <laughs> I am uh, ready to share. OL3, you are go. Uh, for those on M. All stations, M stand by for the images. Yes! Yeah! Flight, this is OL3. I have uh, the target point on the map when you are ready. We are ready, OL3. Go for it. I'll be uh, moving in, showing you the safe zone that we've landed in. Cliff image, OL. Well. Activity, this is OL. Can you repeat that request on M20 EDL off? OL, can we get the other image to show the cliff? I'm sorry, say what image again? I'm not understanding. Flight, OL3. OL3. Uh, you can see uh, we've landed about uh, 35 meters from the nearest rocks that we could identify from orbit by their shadows. Copy OL3, PRN in action. Yep. Take that, Desiro. Woo! Right. <laughs> I remember this spot. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Copy OL3. I'm sure that you have seen them all and you recognize them all. So, <laughs> so reports Electris Dylan Lock with the lander. Flight, we have seen the transition to surface. EDL is done. Woo! Yeah. Woo transition to surface. All stations Thank you are. To <laughs> Congratulations, Perseverance team, and the whole team that's not here as well. Excellent job. <laughs> All stations on M20 EDL Ops, um, we have transitioned to surface as reported downstairs. Uh, if you're part of that surf story to the surface team, make sure you're starting to work those inputs, please.
one. This is AL two voice check. I read you five by. I just want to announce to everybody I've taken a first pass at the surface transition report. Uh, I've got some numbers from the script, and I'm awaiting inputs from a couple people still and confirmation from others. It's uh, ready for review. Copy. The end of that was it's ready for review. Are you asking people to take a look at your cash report? That's right. It's ready for review. Um, I'm hoping, uh, I'm looking for confirmation from a handful of folks on some of the values before making it final. Copy. Do you want that confirmation over this net? Uh, the process is to work it over email. I've sent out an email that they can reply to. Thank you. and pad one, OL1. Um, can we go ahead and get a uh, handoff ready to go for our final Monte Carlo for today? Uh, t this is Tad one. Uh, we're already working on it. Kathy, can you tell me what OD that's on? Uh, the latest one I have is 137. I can, I'll go jump into the nav room and confirm that's the last one. Kathy? Oh, well, this is Tab one. We're Ready to run that Monte Carlo when the handoff is ready. Copy. Thanks, TAP-1. TAD-1, this is TAD-2. Go, TAD-2. Oh, sorry. Uh, TAD-1, this is TAD-2. Go, Ace. Tad and tad Just wanted to get permission to release uh, the tracking stations and the NOPES and everybody. Or TAD-2, tad uh, TAD-1 is currently talking to NAV. Stand by. At least two. <laughs> OL1, this is Tad1. Go, Tad1. Uh, I confirmed that OD137 is the, the final DOD with all of the two way data up until uh, Twink on. Copy, thank you. Tad1, Tad2. Sorry, Tad 2, were you calling Tad 1? Indeed. Uh, I was wondering if you wanted to uh, cancel that last Monte Carlo uh, before we start this one, or if I should get uh, HBC on it so you can focus on the handoff. Uh, how far along is it? Fifty-seven hundred cases. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and kill it. Thank you, Dad. One.